folks, we are going to deal with the roof of the greenhouse. We're gonna change it out to a plastic roof that we bought just the other day. Last year we had uh, just a building plastic draped over as a roof and it worked all the way until fall when uh, wind started coming coming in and we had to go out fairly often to just take care of it. We need to cut the plastic sheets into the right length. Yeah, then it is just to actually put it up and mount it. The roof is on. It didn't take that long at all to sort it out. And we're very happy with the result. I mean, it's not the nicest building in the world at all, but the most important thing is that it will do what we want it to do, which is create a microclimate for our plants to grow and feed us. The potato field is completely free from snow. So I think we're gonna rent a tilling machine and properly till this before we uh, put the potatoes in. Because I think we can put the potatoes in sooner rather than later this year. And hopefully we'll get a better yield than last year. Uh, so Jeremias just came back picking up the rented tilling machine. And this is really exciting because we had committed to... What did we do? We did two years committed with the Ruth Stout method and we yeah. were sad about it. But... It was not as uh, good as we had hoped. No. And yeah, okay, it probably would do better the more we did it, but we were just ready to do it the old-fashioned way. I don't know, whatever. The tilling machine is here for the day. Yeah. Here it is. There it is. So, super excited. Yedemius is going to be busy with that today. What do you think, Yedemius? Do you think it's going to be hard? I think it's going to be fairly easy because we've done this root, root stout method. It's not like this thick layer of... Uh, lawn grass so there's not that much that you need actually needs to till to get it going mm. um so i think it's gonna be a fairly quick job <laughs> who knows famous last words yeah of course <laughs> So I've done the whole potato field now, I think about three times this way and about three times that way as well in different depths as well on the knives that is uh, tilling the earth. For now, I think I'm quite satisfied. We'll see how it goes. I mean, this is going to be better than what it was last year. This season, as far as seed planting is concerned, has been super hard for me. And I think it's because I'm doing no F1s this year. I really need to learn how to work and like recognize things. Um, so I'm up to replanting number three. I guess replanting number two, but total planting number three. And I'm actually gonna put them directly in the soil there, but not super far apart, like as if they're gonna stay there, but I'm gonna use that as my like starting soil. And then I'll transplant them when they're a little bit bigger where I want them to go. Just as sort of a backup. I've got extra seeds and I was planning on using them all for next year, but hey, sometimes they don't, things don't go as planned. All right, this was number two. This was the second planting. Um, this was actually from the first planting. This one's doing really well, finally. Took a really long time. And everything else is sort of like, shmeh kind of doing okay but it's just like a little bit sad um i don't know it's been really difficult last year i was really diligent about going in and out every day i was really diligent about watering um i don't know i think i'm gonna make a couple changes for next year one of them is i, I think i might actually not do the uh, newspaper 
things, but instead use something that's going to be reusable long term. Um, either those um, tin plate uh, things um, or uh, plastic ones that can soak water up. Both of those can do that. And then having a mat underneath that will soak in some water uh, as a way for it to get the water from the bottom upwards. I, I feel like that's a more consistent way to water it. Now I'm gonna do another seed planting thing. I'm gonna do a third planting here, third seed planting. Oh my God. This is not my year when it comes to seedlings, that's for sure. These sticks here are just gonna be markers for me and so I'll know uh, which row is which at least. So I've already put the seeds in some little cups that I'm gonna bring out and just put into the soil and we'll cover the hoop back up and it's already pre-watered and everything so we're good to go at least for a day or two. It's all set up now, very dirty hand. Happy, happy, happy. All right, seeds, I believe in you. You can do it. So I got a question from one of our friends, uh, Matti at Jokmok Gaidena. If you haven't seen their channel, check it out. They do some really cool stuff. Uh, but the question was in regards to the freehand chainsaw milling that I showed you a little bit about in the last video. So today I'm gonna cut this log into some beams because we're gonna build an outdoor shower. I won't go into too many details on how to do it because I haven't, I'm not an expert whatsoever, but I thought I'll show you the process a little bit at least. So we do own a forest property and uh, there's a lot of trees in our kennel here and in our exit chute there's also a lot of trees. So we had to take down a couple last year and they've just been laying around. Um, so this one that I propped up on two tree stumps I'm gonna cut into beams. And of course I want to have it propped up so I don't hit the uh, ground with the sword and the chain so I don't risk dulling it and in a perfect world I would probably take off the outer bark first but I will uh, skip that this time <laughs> I will just peel it off once the um, the beam is off no particular reason why I do it that way than the other way but it's a nice log I will get two beams out of this plus the end pieces so I will start with cutting this side here, roughly there. Oh, then I will cut that side right there, and then I will tip it, and I will cut that, I will cut that, and then I will split it in the middle. So there we go, the base structure of the beam. I did a little bit of a mistake over here. I changed the um, angle I held the chainsaw because I was worried that I, I got it too wide here in the end. So it didn't necessarily turn out the best on this side, but I mean, it's still gonna be useful for what we need it for. So this is what it looks like, the beam. And then over there is where it got a little bit messed up. But, I mean, I'm quite happy with it, just from freehanding it. So that what it, that's what it looks like after freehanded milling. So in the beginning, I just go over the log with the chainsaw I just make a big line across the whole log so I have some reference to go after and then I slowly start walking back and forth uh, swinging it using the bottom part of the sword to just cut into it or rip into it really and I mean for me it works 